Up in space, satellites are revolving around the Earth, some of them close by, meaning 100 or 200 miles up, and some of them are quite a ways away. Anyways, they look down at the Earth, and some of them look at the Earth with visible light, and some look into the infrared spectrum. Now, infrared it means heat, and fires, when they're burning, they're giving off a lot of heat. These satellites can see that, and they're used to detect fires. So, let's look at this. Activefiremaps.fs.fed.us. That's where we're at. Now, if you go on the look at the side, there's a bunch of buttons, and we're interested in this one, Fire Data in Google Earth. If I click on that, I get this. The four little pictures at the top, that's you selecting what data you want to look at. The U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada. Now, <clears throat> the stick pin fire just south of Grand Forks, that's in Washington State. We're going to look at that. These four buttons below those pictures, they're which instrumentation packages on which satellites you want to look at. Now, MODIS, VERS, and AVHRR, those are uh, on satellites which are revolving around the Earth every 90 minutes or so. They cover a different strip of the Earth. And MODIS and AVHRR look at the Earth as one kilometer patches, and VERS looks at slightly smaller, it's down here, 375 meter and 750 meter patches. GOES, on the other hand, is sitting far, far away, 22,500 miles away from the Earth, which means it always looks down at the same portion of the Earth. And it is further away, so it has patches that are four kilometers by four kilometers. Now, once you select one of these buttons, it changes what goes in here. So, there's VERS, there's AVHRR, there's GOES. Let's look in MODIS. Okay, when you click on current, okay, we click on current. Uh, the web browser, in this case it's Firefox, wants to know what to do with this KML file. And I'm going to say open it with, and I have Google Earth. If you don't have Google Earth, you can download it. It's a free download. Now, it's going to download the KML file, launch Google Earth, and then pass the file over to Google Earth. And Google Earth will then rotate so that the area coverage is in view. In this case, it's the United States. If you look in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a legend showing in color the dot ages. So yellow dots are older, six days up to the last 24 hours, and then orange, the last 12 to 24 hours, and then the two reds here are within the last 12 hours or within the last six hours. Now, with Google Earth, I can just use my left mouse button and drag this map over here. Washington State is in the center. I could use this to zoom in, this control on the right, or I could use my mouse wheel, much more convenient. Now, this is our area here. Now it's a little bit tilted, so you go up to this control in the upper right hand corner and click, double click on the end and it orients the map with north pointing straight up. Now this area here, this is Rock Creek. This area here, this is our area, and there's Grand Forks, and this is the stick pin fire. All those yellow dots, those are the old detections. The red dots are the more recent detections. And if we zoom right in here, we can look at these dots. Now, here's a red dot. This may be the prescribed fire from the other day, I'm not sure. But if you click on the center of the red dot here, it expanded into two more red dots. I click on one of those. It shows you the location, the date of the detection, the time of the detection, and it gives you other information about the sensor, the source, and confidence level. Uh, and if you are wondering how far away this is, go up to Google Earth's menu, click on the ruler. Now you can tell it, I want to see in kilometers, or I want to see in miles, or other units of measure. We're Canada, so we'll use kilometers, and you just click once here, and then click up here, and it shows you how far away it is, 10 kilometers to that point from where we are. So now if I close that, that goes away. Now, this satellite is also showing information across the border here in our country, and you can see up here 
above Christina Lake, there's the cluster of detections from near the Paulson. There's another recent one over here that's closer to Rossland. I would imagine that they'll be looking at that because this is the information that those services use. Infrared fire detection data in Google Earth. Now, if we go back to Firefox, there's also animation and historical. I haven't even tried historical. Animation is a little bit more to that because, well, first you have to, you have to learn how to run an animation in Google Earth. And the other thing is that these first three satellites here, they're on lower Earth orbiting satellites, so they revolve around the Earth once every 90 minutes or so, depending on their altitude. Goes here, revolves around the Earth the same speed that the Earth rotates, once or tw every 24 hours. That's how it stays in the same location relative to the Earth's surface. What that means for the animations is that as you look at the animations, you'll see detections pop up and go away and pop up and go away and it has to do with when the satellite was looking and what it saw. Uh, that's a different video and I'm not going to get into that now. Uh, you can go and ask Google or uh, you can go and ask Google what is MODIS, what is VERS, AVHRR and GOES and it will come up with pages where you can go off most of them are Wikipedia and it'll explain what these are, what do the acronyms mean uh, and I leave that up to you. I'm Les in Grand Forks. I hope you're safe wherever you are. And that's a short little how-to with the active fire data in Google Earth.